All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to determine the power consumed in this series parallel circuit. So it's a combination of parallel resistors here that are in series with two other resistors. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the power consumed by each resistor and the overall circuit as a whole. So to get started, we're going to need to deal with these parallel resistors first. And we want to find the equivalent resistance of them if we were to replace them with a single resistor. We're going to call that R equivalent and the expression for our equivalent is going to be one over our equivalent is equal to one over r2 plus one over r3 we can rewrite this as our equivalent inverse is equal to r2 inverse plus r3 inverse and then what we can do with that is we can now we can just isolate for our equivalent where we're going to have R2 inverse plus R3 inverse, and we're gonna take the inverse of that summation. So we can plug in what we have. Uh, R2 is 10 ohms, so we're gonna take the 10 inverse plus 15 inverse, where 15 is uh, the resistance of R3. We're gonna take the inverse of all of that, and then they're gonna see that this kind of just works out to be 0 0.166 repeating inverse, which all turns out to be six ohms. Okay, so our equivalent is six ohms. What that means is we could replace these two resistors in parallel with a single resistor coming through that is six ohms. Now that's useful to us because now what we can do is we can just work with that equivalent resistance and we can find the total resistance of the circuit. So we're gonna call that RT and that is going to be the summation of the R1 plus R equivalent plus R4, because these three would just be in series with each other. So all we have to do is take the sum of all of them. Uh, so R1 is just five ohms plus R equivalent, which is six ohms plus R4, which is 20 ohms. And we see that the, uh, the total resistance of the circuit is going to be 31 ohms. Now what we want to do with that is we want to go and apply Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is equal uh, is V equals IR. And what we can do is we can rearrange this for I, say that I is equal to V over R. Now we know the source of voltage here is 48 volts divided by the total resistance, uh, which is 31 ohms. And 48 divided by 31 gives us 1.5484 amps. Okay, so knowing that, now we know that there is certainly 1.5484 amps coming out of here, which means that there's the same amount coming back through. So that's how much current is flowing through R1 and also through R4. But here, it's going to split. And in order to find each of the individual branches, we're going to use the current divider formula. And the current divider formula is the individual current of the branch is going to be equal to the total current that's flowing into the split uh, times the total resistance over the resistance of the individual branch. I'll put a link up in the corner here to a video where I go over the current divider formula, but otherwise we're just going to proceed with it uh, and figure out what the current is in R2 and R3. So for a current in I2, we know that the, the total current that's flowing in is going to be this 1.5484 amps times the total resistance of this area, which is six ohms, times six ohms divided by the resistance of the branch, which is 10 ohms. And we're gonna see that I2, once we crunch that six divided by 10 times 1.5484, that gives us a value of 0 0.929 amps. Now to get the current in the other branch, what we could do is we could just subtract 0 0.929 from 1.5484, or we could apply the formula again. Let's just do that because we got some time. So I3 is just going to be equal to 1.5484 amps times the total resistance in this area divided by the branch resistance, which is 15 ohms. This method works as well. Either way, we're going to come to a value of 0 0.619 amps flowing through this uh, right side. So now what we want to do is we want to write out our power formulas, and we have three of them. We have P equals VI. We have P equals 
I squared R and we have P equals V squared over R. And we want to pick one that uh, we have both of the variables for. So we have the current flowing through each resistor and we have the resistance of each resistor. So we have current and resistance. This is the one that we're going to be going for right now. We don't currently have the voltage drop across each resistor. Now we could have done that and I'll go through that at the end of the video, I think, but we don't have that value right now. So neither of these two really are helpful to us because we don't have those individual voltage drops. So let's just scroll down and give ourselves some space to work here and write out our expression for the power dissipation of resistor one. So it's going to be P1 is equal to I squared R. So the current that's flowing through the first resistor is going to be 1.5484 amps. It's this amount that's coming through here. So 1.5484 amps all squared times the resistance, which is five ohms here, which is going to give us 11.988 watts. All right, let's set up our equations for the rest of the power dissipations as well. And to fill them in, we're going to need to know the current flowing through each. So the current that flows through resistor two is 0 0.929 amps. The current that flows through resistor three is 0 0.619 amps. And the current that flows through resistor four is the full amount again, 1.5484. And those will be multiplied to each of the, the given resistances. So R2 was 10 ohms. R3 is 15 ohms and R4 was 20 ohms. And we can just crunch that in the calculator and get some results for our power dissipations. Then what we wanna do is we want to find the total power dissipation of the circuit. And all that is is the, the sum of each of the individual power dissipations. So we have power one, two, three, and four. And if we add all of these up together, we're gonna to see that our total power dissipation is going to be 74 point three watts. And it's always a good thing to check the total power supply of the circuit because the amount of power that you supply must equal the amount of power that's dissipated. So we can do that by assessing our 48 volt source voltage, knowing that there's 1.5484 amps going through. And we can just use this expression here, P equals VI to uh, check that. So we have P equals VI, which is equal to 48 volts times that current that's going through, which is 1.5484 amps. And we're gonna see that our total here is also 74.3 watts. So that checks out. That looks like we've done it correctly, which is awesome. Um, now, I do want to show an alternative solution to the problem. So the way that we solved this, we found the current flowing through each resistor. And we did that using the current divider formula. Uh, and and once we had the current and resistance in each resistor, that's how we proceeded to find um, the power dissipation in each one. But there's an alternative way. If you can't remember the current divider formula or you just don't like it, um, what we could have done is we could have recognized that we knew that 1.54 amps was coming out of the battery and going through resistor one. Something is happening here going through resistor two and three, and then for sure all of the current is coming back through resistor four. So what we could have done instead is we could have found the voltage drops across resistor one and four. And uh, let's actually do that over here. I'll just clear some space for us to work. So we can find the voltage drop across resistor one. It's going to be V1 is equal to IR1, just simply using Ohm's law. We know that there's that 1.5484 amps flowing through times the resistance of five ohms. And we're gonna get a voltage drop of 7.742 volts. Okay, we can also find the voltage drop across R4. So we're gonna call that V4 is equal to I4. We can even put little subscripts in here. I4 over, or sorry, times R4. And again, we have that full amount of current that we know entering and leaving that battery. So it's 5.484 amps times the resistance, which was 20 ohms. And we're gonna find that the voltage drop across resistor four is 30. 0.968 volts. We can label these on the diagram because it'll be easier for us to visualize. So we had 7.742 volts. And over here we had 30.968 volts. That's a drop across each resistor. 
Now, if you remember Kirchhoff's voltage law, as you go in a loop around a circuit, your sum of voltages, uh, basically the algebraic sum of those voltages has to be equal to zero. Um, you can indicate your polarity on here if you want, um, or you can shade the different nodes with a, with a color. It doesn't really matter. Let's do that. Let's shade on some colors here. So we'll have some colors like this. And as we go around, we have 48 volts. We're gonna drop 7.742 uh, from the red shaded area across this resistor to the green node. And then from the green node, we're gonna drop something uh, to the yellow one. And from the yellow one, we're gonna drop 30.96 back down to, to zero, basically. So we can write out Kirchhoff's voltage law if we want. Um, really, it's just going to be 48 volts minus V1 minus V4. That's going to just equal V2, or it's also going to equal V3. And you can just do the sum. So you have 48 minus 7.7 .7 minus 30.96. And we're going to be left with the voltage drop from the green to the yellow node of 9.29 volts. If we had combined them into this equivalent resistor, then it would just be the voltage drop across the resistor. Basically, that's why I colored them. It's going from the green node to the yellow node, whether you're going across two parallel resistors or off of one single across one single resistor. But now we have the voltage drop across each resistor. So we have V1 here, we have V4, and V2 and V3 are both equal to 9.29 volts. So we have that, and so now we could use this expression here where we have a known voltage drop and a known resistance of the each element. So using that power formula, we can now solve for each power dissipation in each resistor. So P1 would just be equal to V1 squared over R1, which is the voltage drop squared. So it's going to be 7.742 volts all squared over R1, which is five ohms. And that is going to give us a value of 11.9 watts. And that is the same value when we come down here, when we calculated it the other way. 11.9, there's just some rounding somewhere that, uh, that is the reason for the slight discrepancy, but that is another way to solve for the power in each resistor. So let's just go through and do uh, P2 as well. So P2 is going to be equal to V2 squared over R1. And this one is going to be the voltage drop across R2, which was 9.29 volts squared over the resistance of R1, sorry, R2, uh, which is 10 ohms. And that gives us a value of, and that gives us a value of 8.6 watts. And again, when we come down to compare that with our calculation from the other side, 8.6 watts again. We'll just make a little bit more room here for the calculations. And we'll quickly rip through P3. So P3 is going to be equal to V3 squared over R3. Uh, V3 again, 9.29 volts. We're gonna square that and we're gonna divide it by the resistance of R3, which is 15 ohms. And we're gonna find this to be 5.7 watts. And for P4, we're gonna do the same thing. V4 squared over R4. And that is just going to be the voltage drop across resistor 4, which is 30.968 volts squared over the resistance, which is 20 ohms, which gives us 47.9 watts. And when we go and compare those to what we had below, 5.7 and 47.9. So it's really up to you to determine how you want to go ahead and solve these problems. If you want to try to find current everywhere, if that happens to be the easiest method, go for it. That's one way to do it. And then just pick the formula here that uses current and resistance. If for some reason you're not given resistance at all and you have the voltage drop in all the currents, then use this one. And if you happen to be able to calculate the voltage drops, and know the resistances, then pick this guy. I think this one is actually in this situation is the easiest, um, but when you first look at the problem, not everyone uh, might recognize that you can figure out the voltage drop across these without even finding the current, but with more practice, uh, it becomes more apparent. So anyways, hopefully that video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.